just trying to survive. I hope Keith gets his life back together because uh, truly he's one of the greatest players uh, ever, ever. They turn you into a fucking monster on the field and you take that monster home with you. And you hurt the people around you that love you. And you don't know why you do it. You surely thank you, Dennis. Tonight, Bucks Nation is mourning former linebacker Keith McCants. The Pinellas County Sheriff's Office says he passed away in St. Petersburg this morning from a suspected drug overdose. He was just 53 years old. McCants was a powerhouse at the University of Alabama before the Bucks drafted him fourth overall in 1990. McCants had injuries from his football career led to a drug addiction. We spoke to him back in March when he told us about his efforts to get sober with the support of his close friend, then city councilman Robert Blackman. Blackman, who's now running for mayor, said in a statement tonight that Keith meant everything to him, even saying he would lovingly call him his 53-year-old son. Blackman went on to say he hopes his friend has finally found peace. Keith McCants was a football player. He was a father. He was a son. And he also suffered from mental illness. And NFL might not say it, they might not even try to verify it, but today, we're gonna look to the life and the old timely death of Keith McCants. Rest in peace. I hit the road, baby, huh? Count team, we baby, next. hit me up, IG, follow me, baby, huh? Ain't on the pill, but I'm rolling. Rolling on the weed. Ain't on the pill, but I'm rolling. Rolling on the weed. Ain't on the pill, but I'm rolling. Rolling on the weed. Former Murphy High and University of Alabama star Keith McCants was the picture of an unstoppable defensive force on the field. I thought Keith was probably one of the best football players that ever come out, ever come out of our area. Gosh, he was just a Tarzan on the field. He could do anything. But the glory days are long over for McCants, who investigators say was arrested with two alleged prostitutes after panhandling. The officers observed him doing what we call panhandling, uh, soliciting uh, change and things like that from vendors as they went into area businesses. So he was approached as a result of his, his activity of, of panhandling uh, customers going in and out of stores. Pritchard police say McCants appeared under the influence Friday evening when he allegedly threw a pair of pliers, a screwdriver, and a crack pipe at an officer. His mannerism and his behavior uh, was somewhat threatening to the officers. Pritchard police charged McCants with resisting arrest, possession of drug paraphernalia, and loitering. The latter two charges he also faces in Mobile. Since leaving the NFL, McCants has faced a list of charges, including cocaine possession and theft. Former Alabama and NFL quarterback Scott Hunter says McCants had contacted him about his NFL pension. I think Keith would have liked to have been able to, of course, draw the pension at that time because he needed it. Hunter says McCants is a wonderful person and there are plenty of people available to help the former linebacker. I hope Keith gets his life back together because uh, truly he's one of the greatest players uh, to ever, ever come out of Mobile and uh, you know, wear that red jersey at Alabama. How quickly the tide has turned. Tampa Bay selects Keith McCants, yeah. linebacker, University yeah. of Alabama. There he is, Keith McCants. 0.1% of the people make it to the National Football League, and I was number one in the world. I thought Keith was probably one of the best football players that ever come out, ever come out of our area. Gosh, he was just a Tarzan on the field. He could do anything. So what people didn't know about, about Keith McCants coming out of the college and being the rated number one player in the country is that I had a bad leg. And one of the coaches said, okay, I signed a five-year, $7.6 million contract. And one of the coaches made the statements. Uh, what the doctor said, my cancer ain't gonna last in five years. They said we only need him for three. Twenty-seven doctors of, of the NFL looked at it and they said that I can have surgery if I want to. Other than that, I just have to deal with the pain and play. I've been doing it for four years, and my knee is not a major concern. But my performance will take care of itself. I ain't thinking about no damage. I'm like, okay, then I feel good. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick some butt. So I go out there and I tear myself up even more. This arm, I can't raise over my shoulder. The triceps is deteriorating. My whole arm is deteriorating. I shatter my elbow twice, hitting the guy side of his head, and continuing to play. I'm 
46 years old, and today I can't lift my arm over my head. You take a player and you put him out there, and he get hurt, and you put some say, okay, you take this painkiller, you can play. If you don't take it, you can't play. The love and the passion that you have for the game, you gonna go and do it. You're 21 years old, you don't know no better. Game day, we walk in the locker room. Those who gonna get shots, get in this line. You should have seen the people running to get their tour dog shot. After the game, you got your pills, Percocets, Tylox, lower tab, cortisone shots, morphine pills, or morphine shots. Before it was over with, I was consuming over 183 pills a week, not knowing the effects it had on my liver or my kidneys, or more importantly, my developed a split personality with my violent tendencies that my family had to deal with. Not knowing, like, what's wrong with you? Why are you acting like that? Why are you talking like that? Why are you snapping on me? Dad, what did I do? It triggers something in you, and you become more violent, you become more angry, and you become a different player on the field. And they love that. So, but when you take it home with you, and when you take it into society, and when you take it to the public, Oh, you want to embarrass them to the team. Oh, you can't do this. Oh, you can't do that. Well, let's go, okay, go back and see, see where this thing stemmed from. What about all the stuff you're giving me? And you threaten if I don't take it, that you're going to get rid of me because I can't play with the pain. As long as I was a part of the National Football League, playing into the organization, they provided me everything that I needed. The moment they discarded me, got rid of me, six months afterwards, I had to fend for myself. If I go to a doctor and get medication, every time I go to the emergency room, I had no insurance, $600,000 out of my pocket. It was more easy to go and get a line of cocaine or go and get some street drugs or something of that nature after I left the league because that's all I can afford. Getting arrested over 15, 16 times for cocaine. Wasn't doing drugs for a pleasure thing. I wasn't selling no drugs. I was just simply out there trying to suppress my pain. Pritchard police charged McCants with resisting arrest, possession of drug paraphernalia, and loitering. Since leaving the NFL, McCants has faced a list of charges, including cocaine possession and theft. I lived on the streets for two years, eating out the garbage can, um, you know what I'm saying? Go, taking showers in, in gas stations, just trying to survive. I hope Keith gets his life back together because uh, truly he's one of the greatest players uh, ever, ever. They turn you into a fucking monster on the field and you take that monster home with you. And you hurt the people around you that love you. And you don't know why you do it. And they don't help you. They don't give you an answer. I think it's a, they the biggest lawbreakers in the world and they get away with it. It fucking derailed my life and caused me almost to lose my life. And people root for these people every day, every week, all season long, and not knowing the effects that it have on that individual or his family or his loved one, or his wife, or his children. And then when we commit suicide, how many times I stuck a gun in my mouth? How many times I tried to OD? How many times I just hung myself? How many times I lose the will to live? Do, do anybody care? Why well, choose to live? Not choose to spread the message. Any way, shape, or form I can do